This tutorial podcast is sponsored by the Creative Cow line of podcasts. That's right, there's a whole bunch of them. Check them out on iTunes or at www.creativecow.net forward slash podcasts. Creative Cow, now in convenient travel sizes. Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In part one of this tutorial, we talked about a special category of effect called expression controls and how they could be used in conjunction with expressions to create animation on many layers and properties. In that tutorial, we dealt exclusively with the expression control called angle control, but there are five others. Let's take a look at those. Here I am in After Effects with a null object and several layers that have the fractal noise effect. I have them visually interacting with each other through the use of the layer blending mode called Add, which allows the light colors to show through while the dark colors are ignored. Now like many effects, the fractal noise effect has a bunch of properties that use a checkbox, basically an on or an off value. For example, the effects property called Invert has a checkbox which determines whether or not the fractal effect is inverted. I'm going to select the null object and choose Effect Expression Controls Checkbox Control, which adds a simple checkbox to the null layer. If the light switch metaphor I used in part one of this tutorial wasn't all that appropriate there, it certainly is here. This checkbox control works on a binary system of 0 for off and 1 for on. Not that you can see the 1 or the 0, but trust me, it's there. And we're going to use that numerical value a little later. But first, at its most basic, this effect can be used to activate or deactivate any effect property that has a checkbox for on or off. So in the timeline, I'll select my null object and hit E to reveal the checkbox control. Then I'll twirl it down so I can see the checkbox property. Next, I'll select my first fractal layer and in the effects panel, I'll alt click or on a Macintosh option click on the Invert Properties stopwatch, which creates an expression. Then, as I did in Part 1, using the Expression Pick Whip, I'll link the Invert property to the Checkbox Controller's Checkbox property. I'm going to jump ahead in time to where I've connected all of my fractal layers to the Checkbox Controller, and I've added in some on and off keyframes to the controller as well, and as I scrub through time, all the layers invert on the keyframes. Now I recognize that this is not the most practical project you've ever seen, but I showed you that so I could really show you this next use of the effect. In this project, I set up some holiday type lights in this tree. The lights are just a bunch of small solids on which I used a circular mask for their shape and then added a blur effect for some fall off. I'm using the add transfer mode to make them glow a little. If you watch the animation, you can see that at different times I have the red and yellow lights visible and twinkling, and then the green and blue lights visible and twinkling. Okay, so why am I showing you this? Good question. I mentioned earlier that the checkbox control used a binary system of off and on, or rather, 0 and 1. Using those numbers, I was able to put together the expression you're seeing on your screen. And by put together, by the way, I mean that creative cow leader Dan Ebert sent me most of the code, and I used what little knowledge of expressions I have to edit it and make it do what I want. Dan has made tons of great posts in the Creative Cow After Effects forum, solving many an expression quandary. And if you want to see some great examples of After Effects coding, check out his site at www.motionscript.com. Anyway, the first part of this expression is a definition of terms. X equals the value found in the checkbox controller. So in other words, X equals on or off, or numerically speaking, X can equal 0 or 1. Essentially, the rest of this expression says that if x equals 1, then wiggle the opacity of the lights randomly, and if x equals 0, then hide the lights. The green and blue lights have the opposite expression, so that when the checkbox is on, or set to 1, the red and yellow lights are visible, and when the checkbox is set to off, or 0, the blue and green lights are visible. As you can see, the checkbox controller has been keyframed and even has its own looping expression to make it turn on and off over and over again. The point is that these controllers, no matter how simple they seem, can really pack a punch. Let's look at another expression control. In this project, I have four different pictures of the inside of a computer. Now, you'll notice a lot of purple here, and that's because I have certain colors in each image tinted purple. I've done this using the effect called Change to Color. 
Most important to note is that in each image, a different color has been changed to purple. In this image, all reds have been turned purple, in this one, all yellows, in this one, all greens, and in this one, all oranges. Now, if I decided I want to change the color to a different hue, let's say green, normally I'd have to go into each of the four layers effects and set each of their change to color settings to green. But in this case, I've added an expression control called color control to my null object here and I've linked each of the change to color effects to color control using the pick whip as we've discussed already. So if I change this color to green, in each image a different color changes to green. If you're thinking that this could be more easily done with an adjustment layer or via pre-comping and then using the change to color effect on everything at once, guess again. Since each image has a different color changing its hue, you have to do this separately. But by using an expression control, you can control all of the effects with one simple control. And as with other controls, this controller is animatable. So over time, you can have a change of hue. Much better than having to animate many layers separately. Okay, next we have the expression control called layer control. Now this controller lists all of the layers in a composition. But as far as I know, it doesn't do anything useful. I've searched books and forum posts and even tried meditating on it, and even though I did learn the meaning of life and several other ultimate truths, there was no useful information regarding this effect. This effect is not animatable, and I haven't been able to link it to any other property in a useful way. Adobe may have some sort of future intention with this one, but it's been around since After Effects 5.5, and I haven't seen anyone explain it yet. If you figure it out, please let me know. Next we have the expression controller called point control. In this project, I have a lens flare, a lightning bolt, and some particles all on the same point in XY space. Each of these effects has a point control in their effect. For example, the lens flare has a property called flare center, which uses a crosshair based on X and Y coordinates. The two other effects have similar properties as well. Normally, if I made changes to one effect, I'd have to update it for all three. But using a point control linked to all three effects, they can all follow the same position with an update to only one layer's effect. Speaking of layers, you may have noticed that this point control effect is not on a null object layer, but on a red solid layer that is the same size as our composition. That's because the point control needs to be on a layer the same size as the composition, or it doesn't work right. The coordinates get all messed up. And that's because a point control uses the layer's dimensions for its coordinate system. So a null object, which is by default 100 pixels by 100 pixels, has a center point of x equals 50 and y equals 50. The problem is that the center of a 640 by 480 composition is x equals 320 and y equals 240. x and y 50 are up here at the left corner of the screen. As you can see, in this version of the same project where I'm using a standard null object instead of a solid layer, the controller coordinates and the composition coordinates don't line up properly. Okay, we have one more expression control, and that's the slider control, which is probably the most useful and powerful of all of them. We'll cover that one in part three of this tutorial. Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.